Hey, what's up, y'all? So I know Destiny 2, especially PvP, has been in a really bad spot these past couple months, um, which is why I really want to make a video on this today, because I think we finally have some good news and some positive direction going forward, coming into the new season, which comes out in two weeks. Um, this this blog post that Bungie came out today from the Crucible Strike team is really, really good. Like, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Really excited. They're bringing back one of my favorite maps. They're tuning a lot of stuff making better rewards for trials. It's just really good. And I didn't expect it, honestly, which is why I'm sitting here. And I think uh, a lot of you guys wouldn't have expected it too. So um, I know I don't normally make these kind of videos, but I think I actually do have quite a bit of feedback that I want to give and kind of stimulate a discussion around a lot of these things. So that's what I'm going to be doing today, just talking about this blog post, going through it, giving my thoughts, and um, you know, just trying to see, gauge what you guys think of this update as well. So let's just... Uh, get right into it. So I guess the best way to kind of approach this is just go down the list. And um, I've got some notes jotted down on the side of kind of, you know, I've already gone through this and kind of, you know, written down a few thoughts I have. Um, so we're just going to go through it. Um, the first thing, which is some bad news. And um, I know I just spent the first minute of this video kind of dick riding Bungie and saying that they were doing all this good stuff. But they did say here that they're going to be relatively quiet during the next DLC. And um, unfortunately, that means that this blog post is kind of what we're going to get for the, the next couple months. And my big criticism of Bungie is they don't update the game enough. And I I know they just did all these layoffs and stuff, so I, I kind of get it. But, you know, these three, four month long metas of just completely broken stuff, you know, with Prismatic Hunter, Prismatic Titan, all this stuff, you know, th this just isn't going to work for the health of the game. So, they're not going away from that. There's still going to be these long metas that suck, but there are some good things in this in this uh, update. So let's just scroll down and look at the first good thing, which is Solitude. This is a map that I loved. Even before I used grenade launchers, I know some of my friends were like, oh, you just like this map because it's going to be great for grenade launchers. No, I actually really like this map. When Meltdown came back, I was really bummed to see Solitude not come with it. I think this is going to play really good in Trials. Um, and unfortunately, they're saying they're only going to drop it in comp and sixes and holding off on trials for a bit while we verify the competitive integrity of the map in the live game. Like, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Did you verify the competitive integrity of Prismatic Hunter when it launched? I don't I don't think so. Like, just throw this map into trials, dude. It's going to be fine. I don't really get that, but I'm glad to see this map back. This map, I think, is really fun. Um, I think it's going to enhance the game overall. It'll be interesting to see how it plays in comp, um, but I think in sixes it's going to play great. So this is something really good that I'm really happy to see them do. Um, then they added this like updated UI features, so it shows like your your class. So like this is like a warlock. This guy's a hunter, and you can see it up here. Kind of weird. I don't think it really makes that big of a difference, but okay, cool, I guess. And then they have this like assisted by things. Like whenever you die, you know it'll say like who kills you. It'll like highlight them still on the death screen. But then it'll also show, like, if you were assisted by someone, which I think is kind of interesting. Once again, you know, it's, I don't really think it's, like, super pressing, but I guess it, it does just give more information, and it's something simple to do. So um, I guess that's a good thing. And then they added this tombstone thing where it shows, like, the weapon that you died to. Um, so, like, in, in my games, like, if you're playing against me, you're just going to see a grenade launcher icon <laughs> everywhere, which is probably going to be a little toxic, but... Okay, as well, you know, I, I don't think this is really that great of a change, but it, it doesn't hurt the game. It's like a small enhancement. So, yeah, I, nothing too crazy here, but I promise, guys, Bungie gets to the good stuff later in the article. So after these kind of useless quality of life things, I it's, it's kind of hard to call them quality of life things because I don't think really they're going to enhance the game at all, but whatever, like they're, they're kind of cool. Um, they talked about Mercy rules, and pretty much this is a lot of jargon here, but they're going to make it so Mercy's activate more often. Um, cool, I, I guess. I they, they do bring up a good point where it's like, there'll be games where it reaches like a certain thing where the join in progress turns off, so there'll be like four versus five, and it'll be clash, and there'll be like six minutes left in the game, and you know the score's like 40 to 50. You know, it's like, the game's never going to end. It's going to go to time. Everyone's kind of just waiting for it to end. And it looks like they want to kind of minimize that, which I think is good. That's definitely a problem that I think 6v6 has had. Um, 
having mercies be more often. I'm not sure if that's the right thing because sometimes you just want to play the game and if it's mercy, 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 and then you have to, you know, long queue times you're sitting in queue. I don't really know how this is going to work, but I think their intentions are good on this. So we'll have to see how this works. But um, yeah, I, I think it's good that Bungie realized that there is a problem with the um, the current state of the matchmaking right now. And then they talk about competitive here. This, you know, there once again, it's a lot of jargon here. Um, pretty much they're just streamlining the rank system and trying to make a better placement system. So, you know, I think some of that happened with, with new players and kind of like lesser skilled players is they jump into comp and then it would like put them in a, you know, a 2K ELO lobby and then it would put them in a 10K lobby and they'd get, you know, absolutely shit on. They're like, well, I don't want to play that. That sucks. So apparently they're trying to just make it like less jarring and less all over the place and kind of figuring, you know, like trying to find what rank you are a lot quicker. So I think this these are good changes. I don't think they're going to help comp. Comp is kind of just fucked. I think the game mode is just really bad. There's the two game modes. I think Collision, I know some a lot of people don't like it. I think it's actually the better game mode. I think Clash plays terribly in this meta, especially with, you know, how streaky the Hunter Super is and the Hunter Kit. Um, I just think it plays really poorly. And then Collision is not perfect. Like, there's kind of snowball mechanics on it. And it's just, comp is just a mess. You know, it's 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 a joke, especially solo, because whenever I try and play solo, the, the queue times are so low at, at max elo that I just keep playing six stacks, or uh, three stacks. And there's really nothing I can do, because they're all just running meta bullshit, right? So cool i guess this you know, like they say this may sound small noticeable positive yeah i i don't know maybe for the average person it'll have a noticeable positive effect but for me i don't i don't really see this moving the needle at all but it's good they are looking at the the average experience because that is important you want more people playing the game and then we come into <laughs> the thing that nobody agrees on and everyone always has a, a crazy you know hot take on which is lobby balancing and skill-based matchmaking. So apparently they were going to use the snake draft. And if you don't know what a snake draft is, you can look it up. Um, it's pretty much like, I know the NFL does it for for uh, drafts and stuff. Um, you can look it up. I, I couldn't explain it to you. I watch European football. <laughs> not I'm not, you know, I'm an American, but I don't watch American sports. Um, but the snake draft looks like a cool idea, but they ran into some issues um, where like, I don't know, like it was weird with fire teams or something. Um, but they changed that out. It was, so it was supposed to be snake draft, and then they changed it out for lobby rank averaging, which I actually think sounds like a pretty decent solution here. So it, it ranks people 1 to 12 or 1 to 6. Like if it's, you know, a 3v3, then it, you know, the highest skill person is number 1, the lowest skill is number 6, and then it, you know, puts 1, 3, and 5 on a team, and, you know, 2, 4, and 6 on a team or whatever. And in practice, that makes sense, but I think that also contributed to a bad comp experience for me because I'm always, you know, most of the time I'm number one. So I'm always going to be, you know, put against the bots or like the bots are going to be on my team. You know, it's it's not a perfect system. And I think they realized that because now they're going to the snake draft and they said this is going to be the primary system in Revenant. And um like I said, like I, I actually looked for like 15 minutes. I looked through some of the old blog posts to see if I could find something from Bungie talking about this and actually how it's going to work in Destiny. But they always just like, they only say, oh, it's Snake Draft. Like they don't say, are they going to change the Snake Draft in any way? So we're going to have to see. But um, yeah, the this lobby balancing thing, you know, they say that they're, they're having a lot of trouble with it, you know, kind of trying to find a, a system that works and i think it's because there is no system that works like lobby balancing is so hard because you want new players not to get shit on but you don't want to punish good players for being good right and i think me personally the only way to improve things is control should always be no skill based matchmaking should be connection based and then you have another playlist that is skill based matchmaking and it can rotate based on like the um the week or something, but you have increased rewards for higher tiers. So like if you're in a higher skill bracket, it shows you you're in a higher skill bracket and you get better rewards. I, I don't think there's a way to balance this without increasing the rewards for better players, but that's just me. I'm not a game developer. So what do I know? 
So I know I've kind of been rambling here. Um, I'm not a very coherent speaker, so sorry if that turns you off. I'm not Cami Cakes. I can't read something perfectly and, uh, you know, say my thoughts in a perfect way. I'm kind of all over the place. That's how my brain works. But this is where we finally get to the good stuff, which is the sandbox. Um, and before we get to the sandbox, this. Thank you, Munchie. <laughs> Thank God, man, because this shit was pissing me off, dude. I'd get these comments saying... Oh, you're a crouch spammer. You're I'm not a I'm not a crouch spammer, guys. Like I tap my crouch. Look, this limit is something you can be tuned, and a tactical crouch or two during an engagement is an expression of skill and not something you want to discourage. That's what I do. You tap crouch, you know, move a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's all these losers in this game who just want to cheat and use macros and all this stuff. And I wish Bungie would just ban these people because it's pathetic. And I think. You know, maybe another day I'll talk about the accessibility crisis that's enabling people to legit cheat in this game. Um, but that's not going to be today. This is a good update. This is making it so it's pretty much impossible to crouch spam now with macros. And about time. I wish you'd ban them, but at least it's not going to happen anymore. So there we go. That's that's obviously a really good thing. When I saw this, I'm like, yeah, finally. Bun like, but that's actually a good solution from Bungie. So good job, Bungie. Proud of you on that. And then um, they talk kind of just about where the primary weapons are right now. And um, it's kind of what you'd expect. Like, auto rifles, hand cannons, pulses at the top. Um, scouts, SMGs, and sidearms kind of here. Bows way down here. And then fighting. <laughs> like, look at this graph, guys. Look at this graph. So so let me explain this graph first. So this is um, primary weapon meta high skill. So this is from 8.0.5. This is um, percentage of kills expected, and then this is usage rates. So for example, Rose has a 9.5% usage rate, and it on average is getting like 10% more kills than expected. And um, you know, the higher the usage rate, you know, this this graph is, is the average here. So like Ace of Spades is pretty close to it, you know, all these guns, right? And when you look at these, a lot of these are actually quite good. Like there's no real outliers here. The, the meta in, in primaries, you know, what Bungie says, they think it's a good, a good, um, a good balance. And I agree. I think like the primary meta is actually really good, but look at fighting line guys. Look at that. It's almost as bad as no hesitation. The healing auto rifle, <laughs> that thing like whiffs every bullet and is meant to just shoot at your teammate. And it almost has the same expected kills, like, you know, less amount of expected kills than fighting line, which is ridiculous. Like, come on, Bungie, you, you really, really look at these stats. Yeah, we we uh, we we needed to make sure we nerf fighting line guys, and uh, you know, not only are we increasing health on March third, we're gonna or March fifth, we're gonna nerf the the damage as well. So we're gonna double nerf the gun because one player can fucking use it. Well, fuck you, Bungie. Look at these stats, guys. Really, you're not gonna buff this gun. Whatever, man. But sorry, sorry, I'm I'm biased, of course. But this is ridiculous, guys. Look at this, unbelievable. But overall, what they're trying to say is the weapon balancing itself is quite good, and I agree. Um, Elsie's rifle is obviously a stat monster. The one thing I will say, though, um, if we look at this graph here, I was surprised to see Igneous, you know, much lower than expected here. Um, not not too much lower based on you know the the kind of the trend here. And I could be reading this graph completely wrong, guys. Like maybe I'm just fucking stupid. But I'm surprised to see Ignis here, and I'm really surprised to see uh heliocentric down here. I think these two guns are S tier and ridicul ridiculously broken. Um Igneous Hammer shoots freight trains and heliocentric is the biggest bot gun of all time. You just aim center mass and hold down your trigger. Right. So I'm surprised to see those two, but all they're saying here is that um that the primary weapon archetype you know kind of dynamic in the game is good and i do agree with them it's mostly been the abilities that have been a problem okay uh, i'm going to try and speed up the rest of this i've been ranting a lot let's just go through these really quick so they're nerfing and buffing some guns so adaptive hand cannons that's like 140s like better devils um and not rose for some reason because rose is a lightweight which is kind of weird because when you look at this graph like shouldn't rose be something that that gets tuned right they're kind of nerfing the other 140s, but it's really small. It's just like a little bit of a three-tap range fall off, so not really that big of a change. 
Adaptive auto rifles, um, once again, like a tiny change. Nothing really crazy there. High impact pulse, this is the big one. So, you know, like Cold Denial, the one I use, 340 pulses. Um, they're lowering the damage by a decent amount. What is that, by 0. 0.5? And that's going to make it so um, you have to hit five crits, one body. It'll be five resilience instead of, I can't remember what it was before, like seven maybe, six or seven. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to work with Headseeker. I know right now that Headseeker does not two burst with five head, one body, if they're 100 resil. I think it does with 90. So I would assume that maybe goes down to 80 or 70 with this change. I think that's a good change. I think it's, you know, they were way too easy to use. Even when I'm using Cold Denial, like it's it's clear, guys. Like it's way too forgiving to use a pulse rifle right now. So I think this actually will fix a lot of the problems with pulse rifles. Um, they're still going to be strong, don't get me wrong, but at least they're going to take more skill to use. So I think that's a really intelligent way to nerf that. And then the buffs, um, they're buffing adaptive SMGs. And I was looking for like what SMGs adaptives are. Immortal is not one of them. Um, I think that's an aggressive. The uh, the Crucible one, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but that one is um, is not an aggr- or is not a um, adaptive like i don't really know any adaptive smgs in the game that are actually viable so cool i guess like maybe this will make them a little more viable um i don't think it's gonna be a crazy update but maybe i'm wrong maybe nico is gonna go crazy with his double smgs again so who knows um precision autos this one i think is actually somewhat interesting um because you remember when when final shape came out prospector was ridiculous like everyone was farming that to get the god roll and then they mega nerfed it they're rolling back the nerf by like half so these could be a sleeper I actually if you have a good prosecutor then um check it out next update because i think this actually might be good um high impact auto rifles not really anything here precision hand cannons this one i don't like they're increasing the body shot damage by like five damage which is ridiculous why are we making, you know, <laughs> I I don't, it's a stupid change. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, but I don't like where Bungie's head is at on this one. I think it's kind of ridiculous to only buff something by body shots, but I guess 180s are kind of shit right now. So maybe that they found the way like, okay, we can't touch precision. So we have to touch body shot, but I don't like it. I think one 180s are kind of just a low skill controller gun um, that just abuses aim assist. So I really don't like to see this, but I I guess it's not going to push the needle too far. Heavy Burst Hand Cannons. I think this is cool. They were definitely shit when they came out, and I'm glad they were shit. Bungie didn't come out with them, and they're like insanely broken. So buffing it up a little bit, I think is going to be good. I don't think they'll be meta. I know some people in my clan have been scheming a little bit, and there's some, some uh, instances where you can get the little two burst. Um, but we'll have to see with that. I'm not super super optimistic that they're going to be very good but i could be wrong and then um heavy burst pulse rifles which are trash they're getting a a critical hit buff and they're also getting an rpm change so i think this is good as well hopefully it won't push it super far in one direction but yeah i think it's good that they're buffing it because the the two bursts are just terrible in pvp like actually useless compared to 340s and then this one is like, what the hell is this? Like 0.7 increase, I guess, better interaction with damage boosts on scout rifles. Aggressive scouts are really strong right now. So, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference, but who knows? Maybe it will. So I know I just said that I'd go through those quick, and I kind of just went through at the same pace. So if let me know, guys. Am I, like, is this too long? Do you guys want it, like, more summed up? Or do you like kind of these more just rambling? things you know for for those you guys are still watching let me know um but now they're saying that they're going to be working on the new ammo meter which like (laughs) you guys know how i feel about ammo meter like ammo meter is just stupid um you know it's i don't think it's ever going to work they're never going to push things too far and i don't like that they're investing all this time and resources into a new ammo ammo meter system i think it's a big waste of time but what do i know i'm not a game developer um they're increasing trace rifles ammo so arcane will be happy with that i think this is good trace rifles need a little bit of a buff and i don't think this is going to push them too far 
and then uh, snipers. Snipers are the thing about snipers right now is they're shit and they're also OP, which is crazy. Like, I think Bungie just doesn't know what to do to snipers. Like, they don't know how to nerf them, and this is kind of like, you know, making them get flinched. You know, to fucking you know all the way across your screen is kind of just like a, a stopgap right now just to fix things and not break the game um so they're just reducing that a little bit hopefully there's still going to be shit because i hate snipers i hate i think snipers are always going to be an issue as long as aim assist is impacted by frame rate because all these controller players are just getting these 360 hertz monitors and crazy fps and just getting way more aim assist than they deserve to and i think that's more of the issue with sniping but unfortunately, that's not really something that Bungie can fix because it's just the way the engine is. You know, it's not realistic to fix that. So I don't really know how I feel about this, but I hope it still makes it so whenever I shoot someone, they can't hit me. <laughs> that's a selfish point of view. I know it, it sucks for some of you guys who like to aggressive snipe. Um, I used to be one of you. I used to love playing aggressive sniping with my long walk back in year one, year two, the Tari Gaze. Um, but unfortunately aggressive sniping is just not going to work in this in this ammo economy because they want to keep making it more primary gunplay for some reason <laughs> and then they talk about this hammerhead like look at this graph guys this is crazy <laughs> it's actually wild like everything's over here and then you got hammerhead like hammerhead is ridiculous guys and i i I already told you people say like oh why aren't you running triple gl because hammerhead like hammerhead's just ridiculous and this is kind of all you need to know. 31% usage rate. Unbelievable. Um, but they said they're not going to nerf Hammerhead itself. They're just going to try and nerf heavy ammo in general. So like high impact, they're increasing damage. They're like buffing some grenade launcher stuff. Um, decreasing the ammo spawns from 5 to 4. I, I don't think any of this is going to really make a difference, but cool, I guess. So after all that, we finally get down to Trials itself, and they actually talk a lot about this. Um, the first thing is they talk about, like, they tell us which maps it's going to be, which I think all these maps are fine. Um, they say, like, we're interested to hear your feedback. What are your favorite Trials maps? I think my favorite, obviously, Javelin 4, Endless Veil, Burnout. I think those three are just solid across the board. Most people like them. I know some people don't like Burnout, um, but I think it plays well in Trials. Then you got like Altar of Flame, Wormhaven. These two are kind of like, kind of like weird maps, but I think they actually do play well in Trials, surprisingly. Then you got the three new maps. Um, some people don't like Dissonance, but I think it's okay. I just think it's kind of like unorthodox and maybe didn't play well because of the Hunter meta and the Pulse Rifle meta. Not that it's a bad map. I think Sears Plaza is actually my least favorite of the three. Um, I don't know why. It's just. I think the cap points and the timings just feel kind of weird. It feels more like a 6v6 map or a comp map. And then Eventide Labs, as some of you guys know, I I love this map. This map is unbelievably good. Um, I think it's the best map in the pool right now. I think it's perfectly made for trials. I could play every single weekend on Eventide Labs and not complain. So Eventides, Javelin, Burnout, Endless, I think are all good. I think all these maps are fine. Midtown and Rusted. Rusted would be a disaster, actually. Thinking about it, Rusted, imagine where they're going to put the cap point. Are they going to put it in, like, the toilet area? Like, the little, like, underpass or heavy spawns? Oh, man. That would be a disaster. So, Rusted Lands, I don't think, should should be in this. And whenever it comes out, it's going to be really weird to see where they put the cap points. Um, Midtown, I don't really like, but I think it plays okay. So... Um, they're interested to hear feedback. That's my feedback. If you guys have different feedback and comments, leave it below. Um, kind of the whole point of this video is to, you know, kind of stimulate a discussion. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are actually interested in watching this video in its entirely entirety. I know I try and make like kind of shorter content. So um, if you made it to this point and you have any opinions, leave it below because I'm just one player. My opinion is not the be all end all. This is just what I personally think. And I think what people don't really get is that everyone's opinion matters. Even the, you know, bot controller punter players who think, <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but everyone's opinion matters. And I think it's kind of, it's good to have a, a discussion about this stuff. So if you disagree with that, let me know in the comments. 
Um, and then this, this is the big thing. I was thinking about making a trials or a video about trials saying like why it's dead and how to fix it. And this is the main thing, like adding good guns to play for is huge now. Like yesterday's question, this arc heavy burst hand cannon, it's got what volt shot, rapid hit, dragonfly. It's got some crazy good perks like for PVP and PVE. This thing's going to actually make people want to play trials, which is good. Like they need more stuff. I think two weapons isn't enough. Because tomorrow's answer is kind of, you know, it's kind of mid, right? Um, you know, it's a rocket launcher. I don't really know too many things about rockets. I do know from my PV friends that void weapons are really good because they stack with like weekend or something. So maybe this will be good in PV. Maybe it'll be worth farming for. Um, but at least there's one good weapon. And then that, yeah, they said that they're uh, they're buffing these two things. They're like, oh, you should farm. The scout rifle's still gonna suck, and I. Still think the pulse is gonna suck, so we'll have to see though. But this is really good. And then, um, oh yeah, this is really good too. I almost forgot about this. They uh, they changed the weekly weapon to a fifty percent drop rate, so it used to be a hundred percent. Like, let's say it was the scout rifle this week. Every game you'd play, you'd get a scout rifle, non adept, and that sucked. So Bungie realized that and made it 50% instead. So you can still, you know, farm for that weapon that week if you can't hit flawless, but it's not 100%. You can still farm for other weapons while you're playing, which I think is really good. It's a good solution. So uh, good job, Bungie. And then this this is crazy. <laughs> like, I actually, I didn't know what to believe when I saw this first, but class-based trials, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> it's standard matchmaking so it's gonna be solo duo trio you know you can play whatever you want but you can only have one of each class and this actually sounds really fun like i'm excited to try this out i think it'll be really fun to play i'm just worried about the matchmaking times right like if they do this later in the season the matchmaking times are gonna suck and it's gonna be really long and i i don't know but i think it's cool that they're actually trying to do this stuff so this is really cool I think uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. They they said they're doing the labs twice during the season um, and they want to hear feedback. So I'm excited to, to get to get started with it. And um, after I play it the two times on two different maps, I'll, I'll try and give some feedback on it because I think this is cool. It's a good way to diversify and make trials a little more interesting. And then finally, they talk about future trials changes, which I think are all good as well, like new aesthetic rewards, um, you know, armor sets, ships, Sparrow Ghost, emblems. Um, I think that's all cool. Some people really like that stuff. For me, I don't really, you know, care that much. They also talk about, like, we want to improve the story of Flawless Set so high skill players can flex. Like, I think that's <laughs> kind of cringe, honestly. Um, but who, who cares if I think it's cringe? If you think it's cool, go for it, man. Um, I kind of get it, you know, some some people really like to show like, oh, I have the glow and stuff like that. Maybe I think it's stupid just because I come from competitive games and Destiny 2, I kind of like, I don't know. I'm probably just biased on that, but it is a good thing to bring more people in. And then they want to also make the challenger pool, which is the, um, you know, just the normal pool that people are playing in when you don't have a flawed card. Um, they want to make it less like all or nothing. And obviously, I think that's good, too. Some people want, you know, I don't really get this. Some of the top players want Trials to stay this elitist thing where you have to get flawed. Like, I, I think I think it's cool that they've made Trials more accessible recently. You know, people can just play in a three stack and can get their flawless if they just play enough. Like, I think that's awesome. I think bringing more people into Trials is really cool. And I'm all for Bungie looking into these things. What I will say, though, is there are, let's see, where is it? Um, I think it's a little further down here. Where is it? This right here, yes. Um, this I'm worried about. They said they want to update Dominion, which is the zone, um, to make it more in line with the modern sandbox. I don't know what that means, but they say... They want to make the zone appear later, which I think is really bad because the game is going to get slowed down and it's going to be you know, people hiding and playing for picks even worse than it is now. Increasing the time it takes to capture the zone, I think that could be okay if it was like a small amount, like maybe like, you know, an extra five seconds or something, because it does feel like 
people cap it a little too fast sometimes. Um, and then, you know, other changes, right? I'm, I'm skeptical about this. I think it's okay where it is now, and I think they could really fuck up the game if they tune these in a bad way. So I'm skeptical, but maybe there is a better way than we have now. So I'm not against them experimenting with it. Um, and then finally, I know I said finally before, this is finally future sandbox changes. They want to tune ability uptime. Um, the Hunter Super, thank God, and the Knucklehead Radar, thank God. These two things are unbelievably oppressive. And I can't believe they didn't get a nerf, especially the Hunter Super in uh, in the, the recent update where they nerfed Prismatic Hunter. It's unbelievable that they haven't nerfed that, but whatever. At least they know it's a problem. And then uh, finally, I just said finally get, but they're talking about Iron Banner. Um, they want to make it more chill of an experience with Fortress. Or I don't know why. Everyone hates Eruption Bungie. Please do not ever add Eruption back. Fortress was fun. I know there's a lot of heavy ammo and that's that was a problem, but Fortress was actually fun. Just keep it Fortress and try out this inver improved version of Tribute. Get rid of Eruption. Nobody likes it. Um, and they're pretty much saying like, we want to change the fire team stuff. What it what it looks like for me is they want to protect players more to come in and like just you know people who are having fun, you know, and just want to play with their clan. Avoid those people from matching people like me. Which whatever, but you know it's it's going to be longer queue times for me probably, which I don't like. And then they they do want to incentivize grouping up, which I think is fine. I think that's no problem, even though I am a solo player. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I know there's some other stuff here, but I've talked enough. You guys have heard, heard me <laughs> rant enough, so I'm gonna call it there. Um, let me know what you think about this video. I kind of like it's 3 a.m. right now, and I'm sitting here about to go to bed, and and play trials tomorrow. I felt like I wanted to talk about this. I know it's not the most professional video, but I'd like to stimulate a discussion and kind of give my thoughts and um. Give some feedback to Bungie too, because I think overall, I know I criticized them quite a bit in this in this post, but I think this is an update in the right direction, and I think they're realizing a lot of the problems with this game, which they haven't really done in the past. I feel like we're like sitting here, like I feel like we're starting to get more aligned on what needs to be changed. Like March fifth was a fucking disaster, the worst update they've ever come out with in this game. You know, nerfing special ammo and all these different guns and making the broken meta stuff better and everything else worse. And it was terrible. And it, it, it's funny because they know it's terrible. <laughs> They've completely backtracked on the special ammo system. We've gone from, oh, two's too much. And now they're, you know, it's pretty much the same thing, you know, and we've just wasted a year of resources. So I want to give feedback. I care about this game. I play this game a lot. I've played it for a long time and I will continue to play it no matter how dead it is. This game is fun, it's unique, there's nothing else on the market, and I want to see it do well. So, hope you guys enjoy the video, and um, if you are watching this today, on the day it comes out, I'm streaming at 5 o'clock central time. So, if you're interested in watching me, come check me out, and uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Peace.